Canyon have just released a new gravel bike. The second generation Canyon Grail, which from a passing look, you might not have guessed because the famous double decker handlebar has gone. In its place, a completely new bar attached to a completely new bike. It not only looks different, it also feels different to ride. Here are your headline stats. Canyon say it's designed for speed and performance off-road. I say it also has enough extra features to satisfy roadies, commuters and bike packers too. It's got a big onboard storage compartment. It also has a bespoke frame bag that apparently makes the bike more aero. There are super neat mounts for attaching stuff to the forks and it's got its own specific mud guards. Let me tell you more. The Grail was Canyon's first ever gravel bike and it caused quite a stir when it launched back in 2018. In a crowded market, the Grail stood out because it had the most bonkers handlebar setup seen in recent years. Bonkers, but with very rational thinking behind it. The hover bar was all about increasing comfort when riding on the tops and it gives the bike a unique silhouette. Three years after the Grail, Canyon launched a second gravel bike, the Grizzle, which upped the tyre clearance from 42 to 50 millimetres, as well as evolving the geometry a bit, making it slightly more stable, going longer but with a shorter stem, and then covering it with mounts and bosses. What's interesting is that in the US gravel scene, Canyon's pro athletes tended to race the Grizzle, whereas in the first ever UCI World Gravel Championships, which admittedly was not terribly gravelly, Johnny Vermeesh and Matthew Vanderpool finished first and third in the men's race on an ultimate, yep, a road bike. Now, however, with this new one, Canyon are looking to address the emerging needs of speedy gravelers. They're calling it performance gravel. But how exactly does that translate into the bike itself? I'm gonna start by talking about tire clearance, which is not particularly interesting, but I think it serves as a really good statement of intent for a bike. On this one, Canyon have designed it to be used with a maximum of 42 millimeter wide tires. And you can see, I'm using a 40 in here and there is stacks of mud clearance. Perfect for next year's Unbound. Actually, perfect for last year's Unbound. It was won by Caroline Schiff, a Canyon athlete on one of the new Grails. But anyway, you can see that you could potentially squeeze an even bigger tire in, depending on how wide it actually measures and rim width and so forth. But that aside, 42 mil is still relatively conservative by today's gravel standards. So why have Canyon done it? Well, firstly, Pro Canyon Graveler athletes have said apparently that they don't use wider than a 42 mil tire. And then secondly, having that tire width restricted to 42 mil means that Canyon have designed the back end of the bike so you could run a 5236 chain set if you want. Get that going and you will be going fast. Pair that up with some speedy gravel tires and you can see what Canyon are on about. But what else, apart from those two things and your legs, makes this bike fast? Now this bike is not an out and out aero bike, of course not, but Canyon have modeled the difference between this and its predecessor and they've estimated that it'll save you around nine watts. That's at the industry standard of 45k an hour, which is pretty quick for gravel, but they also pointed out that the SBT gravel men's race this year was won at an average speed of 38k's an hour, which is astonishing, isn't it? Now, a big chunk of those aero savings are down to the new handlebar, but also this bike shares quite a bit of DNA with that aforementioned ultimate road bike. It's super light, and also, it's got quite a few similar tube shapes.
It shares the same D-shaped seat post design as on the Ultimate, although with a different carbon layout. This one is designed for increased compliance. A little bit less than on the VCLS leaf spring seat post that's on the Grizzle and was on the previous Grail. The reason for swapping it out is again down to feedback from Canyon's pro athletes who wanted a stiffer platform to pedal from. And it's also, you think, gonna benefit larger riders too. The cockpit is very definitely not from an Ultimate though. It's one piece. You can see that the cables run externally and go internally through the headset there. And it is very gravel specific. So there's a five degree back sweep on the tops and then a flare on the drop. So on my size medium bike, it's 44 centimeters at the hood, 50 centimeters on the drops. Although I'm told there is a pro version that'll be available aftermarket if you want a really aggressive aero position. And that'll be 40 centimeters wide at the hoods. Now the stem part of the cockpit you can see is really short okay now that doesn't mean that the bike feels short and is therefore only suitable for pootling along. The top tube is longer than normal so actually your position on the bike is the same. The reason the stem is short is for handling reasons we'll get onto that in a second. Being a grail though it does feel like there should be something particularly innovative in the cockpit and there is. It's here unlocked with this bolt. This cut out in the handlebars is called the gear groove. As you can see, I've had a Wahoo mounted to it. Could be a Garmin mount too, of course. There is a phone mount adapter, but then there is also a bespoke aero bar attachment. I've got to say, I'm really impressed with how solid these feel. Like I wasn't sure when I'd seen photos, but it's mint and they're inevitably super well thought out. They come straight off the Speedmax TT bike. The jury is of course out as to whether or not aero bars are within the spirit of gravel racing. But as anyone who's ever done an ultra will tell you, this kind of setup is just, it's almost essential for helping to take a bit of pressure off your wrists and your hands and your arms and your shoulders, not to mention helping you go faster for the same effort. So um, yeah. Good little upgrade, that. That handling and the geometry then. For me, aside from losing the hover bar, that is the single biggest difference between this bike and the predecessor. I am a little bit like the Princess and the P when it comes to bike handling, but even if you didn't directly notice the difference, you would indirectly, I'm sure of it. Straight out of the car park, I could feel that the front wheel is further away from you, which is a result of the head angle being slightly slacker. And it manifests itself as feeling a bit different when you get out the saddle. And it takes a couple of moments to get used to that slightly changed sensation as you swing the bike from side to side, but I did find that I automatically compensated for it and it quickly felt normal. In the saddle, meanwhile, it feels similar. The handling is not slow, in part because of that shorter stem, meaning that you require less steering input. But also because the fork itself brings the front wheel further forward. So there's more offset, which therefore decreases the trail, and that speeds up the handling as well. But why do it then? Why have a slacker head angle to slow things down, and then a shorter stem and less trail to speed things up? The slag a head angle and increased offset makes the bike slightly longer, which adds to the feeling of stability at speed and on loose surfaces. But that front wheel being further out in front of you helps to give it more traction when cornering. It's less likely to tuck underneath you as your weight is slightly more behind it, and it also gives you a little bit more feel than a traditional steeper head angle, so you can ride with a little bit more confidence, and when it does start to slide, you've just got fractionally more time to correct it. That was a little bit nerdy, wasn't it? Should we talk about some more cool stuff, like onboard storage? This hatch here in the down tube, okay, is like the rabbit hole that leads to Wonderland. Attached to it is a carbon to peak micro rocket pump, and then underneath it, there is a Canyon own multi tool with, uh, hang on a minute, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight features on, and then, you have to forgive me, I've stuffed all sorts in here. I've got an emergency energy bar. There we go, check it out. Uh, I've also got another spare tube in here. And then, this is super neat, right? So, ha, this pouch here 
in there we've got a tube and then I've got CO2 canister, some tire levers uh, and then there's space in there to spare as well. So you could blatantly get uh, tubeless plug kit, all sorts. What, what couldn't you stuff in there? Hot dog? The bike ships only with the multi-tool and that's only on the CFR and CFSLX models so you can take your wheels on and off. The rest of it is available as a bundle for 79 euros. Lastly then, what about those extras that I mentioned back at the beginning? Well, you can see firstly, I've replaced the little rubber grommets with these Fidlock magnetic mounts, which allows me to attach this, which is the very slick custom uh, frame bag here. It's so slick that Canyon say it makes the bike 1.5 watts faster at 45k an hour, which is pretty cool. Now you can also get some sleeves that go over the fork legs, which allow you to attach those giant anything cages where you can fit and strap goodness knows what to your fork legs. Those will not make the bike more aero, but they are for when you're in full bike packing mode. And then lastly, something which made all of the British and Irish GCM presenters sit up and take note of, was the custom mudguard slash fenders. Now, so many gravel bikes were already pressed into service as workhorse commuters or winter bikes, and they're absolutely perfect for it. So that is a super nice touch. I think I might have got my commuter bike sorted. Canyon quote 8.04 kilos for this particular bike. We've weighed it as 8.5. That's with a truckload of sealant in, two bottle cages, wahoo mount, and pedals, of course. So probably not far off. I've been lucky enough to have been sent the super duper CFR model, which is the lightest and stiffest bike in the range. It's about 100 grams lighter in the frame set over the CFSLX model. The CFSL model is the entry point to the new Grail. That again has different carbon as well, but it also doesn't have the onboard storage nor the gear groove up front either. Now, if you're wondering why my brand new bike isn't actually brand new, I've already done quite a few miles on there and there's a video coming to GCN this weekend where Alex and I take on an epic coast to coast. So do make sure you check that one when it drops onto the channel. Please as well, get involved in the comment section. I really would love to know what you got to say about this bike. We'll be reading those with interest. And lastly, give the video a big thumbs up if you like this new bike and particularly Oh my goodness, this colour scheme, which I can't believe I haven't mentioned right till the end. This is Mars Attacks, apparently. Metallic copper, is what I call it. It's very nice indeed.